simple. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's the big learner for me. I mean, I knew it in my mind, but to come out here, you can see, you know, when the rain, when we get a shower of rain, there'll be no runoff mm. at all. The water will go into the soil. See, so this soil now on our measurements, on our carbon measurements, now holds 360,000 litres per hectare of, of extra water compared to the neighbouring places. Is that so? Yep. You can measure that? You can you? measure, oh yes, mm. and that's related to carbon in, yeah. in soil. So the carbon's increased by two, over 200 yeah. percent, um, and that's increased our water holding capacity in the soil as well. Oh. Oh. Because yeah. this land is managed. And because this correctly. land is managed correctly, yeah. 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 It works in harmony with nature. Mm. And that's what we've all got to do, and, account, and what he's proving with the uh, numbers of other farmers uh, and I guess land managers, some of, the catch, some of the catchment people, is it can be done, and it can be done profitably, it can be sustainably, and it can be done under a decent workload, you know, mm -hmm. so that you've got time for your family, you've got time to sit out and porch and have a gym and time at five or whatever you want to do, go and kick off one of your go trout fishing or whatever. I was going to say there's a lot of other co-benefits as well. So if you manage your land correctly then you have carbon rich soil, it actually takes it out of the atmosphere. That's the whole point. Yeah. I, we know now how to fix it. Fix that? Like that's that's straight through the fence on my brother's farm. Yeah. That one and this is it only took about ten years to build all that topsoil. That's half a metre of topsoil, but so it's not difficult to fix. And because Carl's got in this soil, there's trace elements and other elements available that aren't even available in this soil. They're not even, they're all locked up. And so Cole's got dozens of things, especially things like selenium and that, that are actually absolutely essential to our health. They're available in this soil. Yeah. Um, a lot of the, the, the chemicals, fertilizer, herbicides, pesticides we put on, very detrimental to soil, as in it's, it's killing soil microbial life, microbial life is, is essential in, in getting uh, nutrients into plants. Wow. There's six billion, six to seven billion uh, uh, microbes just in a, in, in a spoonful of healthy soil. So if you think about it that way, as many as many people as are on the planet, there's is heavy, a spoonful, there's a spoonful of, soil. of soil. And what about an unhealthy soil? Well, you could halve or quarter that. Yeah. But it's still, yeah, it's still, there's still microbes, but they're yeah. not the ones you want. Mm. They become yeah. bacterial dogs. They, they might be disease oh, okay. causing or yeah. whatever, you know, you've upset the balance. Yeah. Yeah. And the fungi in the soil, and that's a lot of our previous management created soils that were just mostly bacterial. Yeah. And so you need about 50 50 under crops and pasture. And the fungi actually dictate the nutrient flow to the plant right. and they've got a direct conversation with that plant through yeah. the roots. Yeah, so it. our soils are degraded that much that, that, that we don't have the nutrients in, in the food and, and it is that simple. Mm. So if we improve our soil, it everything else starts to fall into place. Yeah. Yeah. It is the, the, the key to it. I was well. told that you can buy a carrot with no vitamin A. That's right, you can buy an orange without any vitamin C. <laughs> yeah, you can. <laughs> How frustrating is it now? Because I guess it's all new to get governments to listen and, and more people to listen and, and educate the population. Well, that's, that, that's what we. That's that's the aim. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's why we're setting up the, the demo sites and been working with this guy for a couple of years. Mm. Lots of people like him, but it's taken a couple of years to to get a handle on what is actually happening around the country, what's mm. happening around the world to find out where the best practice is and to make some judgments on mm -hmm. what appears to be best practice. And there are a whole, there are a whole series, I liken it to a mosaic. Mm -hmm. You know, there are many components, but, but the two fundamentals which have to be in the mosaic uh, are the, the proper management of soil and water as an interlinked thing, not treated separately. Mm -hmm. They've got to be treated as, a, as, as in, in harmony. Now, you can't just say it's carbon is the answer. Carbon, carbon is a product of good soil and water management. Yeah. And of course, the more carbon you get into the soil, the more water the, the, the can be held in the soil because yeah. a gram of carbon, eight grams of water. Yeah. Lose a gram of carbon, you probably lose eight capacity to hold eight grams of water. Right. And what I, what I found now is that the, the fundamental principles are so simple 
And if we can get the polys to agree, if we can get the agricultural deans, deans of agriculture to, to understand it and agree it, get the public to understand it. And I think it's winnable, well it's got to be winnable because there's no other answer. There's uh, no other answer, it is, it's, it's the an answer imperative. to everything. It's a global survival yeah. imperative.